Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that the content is useful and promotes it to others. If you don't like it, let me know about it in the comments. If you still don't have a Star Citizen account, use my referral link in the description below or the code on screen to snag yourself some extra starting credits. Now on with the video. In this video, we'll cover mining, specifically hand and ground vehicle mining. You can also do ship mining with vehicles like the Prospector or Mole, however those require a not insignificant investment to purchase one of those ships. They can be pledged for with real money or purchased in game, but that could be a whole other video altogether. I've put a link in the description below for the SC Trade Tools website, which has a nice page on mining, detailing the recommended place to go for a given ore type, and also where to sell it. To get started with hand mining, we'll need a multi-tool and a mining attachment. These can be purchased at many shops, including any of the mining shops at a Lagrange Station refinery as seen in the video here. You'll also need some place to store the ore. Most commonly, one will pick up a heavy torso and a backpack. I'm at Mike L1, which has the Pembroke undersuit, which counts as a heavy armor set, and the Pembroke backpack. For the Pembroke kit, being the suit, the helmet, and backpack, it'll set you back just under 18,000 credits. If you have a torso and backpack that you want to use already, that's up to you. Once you've purchased the multi-tool and mining attachment and have it in your inventory, equip the multi-tool and don't forget to put the mining attachment on it. Then you just need to find a cave with suitable rocks. You can usually find investigation missions that will have you find a missing person. In the briefing, it'll detail that it's a cave and where to go. Make your way there and be careful traversing inside. There can be ledges that are hard to see and you may fall to your demise, or sometimes just fall to a spot where you can't get out of. The ore rocks will have small colored pieces sticking out. They'll either be green for Dolvine, blue for Aphorite, or purple for Haydenite. That's also the order of the least valuable to the most valuable. For this video I got lucky and found two ore rocks right at the entrance to the cave. Unfortunately the first one was glitchy and wouldn't scan. Since I couldn't scan it I couldn't see the required optimal charge position and it would either blow up in my face, likely terminating me, or it would just do nothing. Assuming you've equipped the multi-tool and the mining attachment on it, draw it with the number 4, right-click to show the display HUD for it, and then left-click to start the laser. We want to wait for the scanning to finish so it shows us the optimal and overcharge windows on the left side. On the right side it shows us details about the rock itself. We have, from top to bottom, resistance, instability, mass, and the name of the ore type. Largely this not really useful information and just for immersion and flavor. What we care about is the optimal and overcharge windows on the left. The optimal window is the green section, while the overcharge comes up red if we start applying too much power and blast through the optimal area. Since we've already started the laser, we use a metal mouse wheel to scroll up and down to adjust the power. The power charge is displayed by a white line going up the left side. The mining minigame is to apply laser power to get power charge into the rock until it reaches the optimal window. Then hold our power while it fills up the optimal window until the rock cracks upon which time will be granted with some ore to pick up. The amount of power being applied is down in the middle of the multi-tool display. You may need to step closer to have the laser be more efficient, which also means you can step closer back to finally adjust the effective power being thrown at the rock. It's also useful if you hit overcharge and it's going up really fast. Run away at that point and either let it cool down or explode without you nearby. An explosion at close range will usually be terminal. As the power meter on the left side goes up, prepare to reduce your power output, and then be ready to feather power up and down as you see the white charge line getting close to the edges of the optimal window. When you see the optimal window gauge reaching full charge, prepare to back up just for safety so if the rock cracks with force it doesn't hurt you. During the recording of this video I had server responsiveness issues so it didn't crack promptly after reaching charge. If this happens, just stay back and it will eventually crack or you'll hear the charge going back down, at which point it would be safe to approach it again. Once it cracks, go ahead and pick up the ore and store it. If you have a backpack equipped, it will be stored there first. Once that's full, it will then go into any armor that may have storage available. Once you're done mining, go ahead and head to any admin office to sell your wares. I like to use the ones at the space stations as they're usually pretty easy to get in and out of. So use this terminal and go to the cell tab, 
Choose your backpack as the source of the commodity. Then choose what you're selling and how much. And congratulations, you're now a Star Citizen Miner. Now for mining with the Grey Cat Rock ground vehicle, you can rent it at any of the mining shops at a Lagrange Point refinery station in increments of 1, 3, 7, and 30 days. This is real-time Earth days and starts the second of rental. Or you can purchase one from the ship buying kiosk terminal in Lorville for 172,000 credits. Using the rock will also require a ship capable of carrying it. For inexpensive ships, that would include the Drake Cutlass Black, which is 1.3 million credits, or it can be rented alongside the rock itself at the same terminals, or the Consolidated Outlands Nomad for just under 1 million credits. There's quite a few other ships that can also carry it, but they have even heftier price tags. You'll need to do some checking around to see what else is out there if that's your thing. Once you've got your transport vehicle, you'll need to get the rock itself. The ground vehicles can only be taken out at specific places for them. There are garages at New Babbage on Microtech, which aren't too hard to use. There's also a spot at the outskirts of Lorville, but I find it hard to get to and deal with, so normally I just go to a local moon and look for a mining outpost. Most of them have a Platinum Bay office, which is the blue building next to the two blue landing pads. You can claim and take out ground vehicles there, and even some really small sized ships. Go ahead and claim the rock, then request it out. Drive it into your ship and you're ready to start looking for mineable rocks. Now this is the boring part. You'll want to switch to scan mode of the ship with V, then press tab to send out a ping and look for the box markers that come up. There's no readily easy way to tell if it's a giant rock intended for the other mining ships like the prospector or mole, or if it's the small rocks for the gray cat. Once you get close enough, you'll see a symbol that's either a plain rock looking thing, or you'll see what looks like a diamond to identify gems and ores. We're looking for the diamonds. So you're just going to fly around and look for those. Once you find it, you'll land and take out the rock. Now once you've got out and up to the rocks, press M to switch into mining mode. You'll have the fracture and extraction modes. Listen to the audio notification to make sure you're in the right mode. switch modes, use the right mouse button. When you're ready to start cracking the rock, use the left mouse button in fracture mode to start the laser. Then like with the hand mining, let it scan first. It will populate some information on the HUD. The HUD for the rock is slightly different than the multi-tool. As you increase the power with the mouse wheel, you'll see the total power output slide up the arc on the left side of the center circle. The arc on the right side has your charge amount, the optimal window, and the overcharge. It can be a bit hard to see with certain color terrain backdrops, like in the video here. Anyway, go ahead and slide your power up until the charge meter enters the optimal window. Then back it down so you don't go into overcharge. Feather it up and down to maintain the optimal window until it cracks. Similar to a hand mineable rock, when it cracks you'll see the rewards in the ground. As you can see, there are a lot of gems. Thankfully you don't have to go pick them up by hand. Instead, switch the laser to the extraction mode with the right mouse button. Then left click to start it up. The laser is now purple instead of yellow. Move the laser head around to get the beam on top of the HUD markers for your gems. If your rock's cargo is full, you can access the port on the rear of the vehicle to transfer the gems out to some other storage. Currently, as of this recording, the gems don't stack, so it's rather tedious to transfer them one at a time. Once you've finished your mining for the time being and ready to go sell, they'll take them to an admin terminal. When you're going to sell, there's no need to transfer them. When you arrive at a landing facility, the rock's cargo is accessible even if it's inside your ship. Just use the trading terminal inside the admin office, choose the sell tab, Pick your rock as the source of the commodity to sell, then choose what and how much of it to sell. And then you're done. I hope this video has helped you in some way, and I'll see you around in the verse.